you've made the decision that you want to start to invest and you've actually gone one better by deciding to pick a fantastic low cost platform like Vanguard. Well done you. But once you've made this smart choice, you look at the list of what they have to offer and you see 75 different options and you instantly feel overwhelmed. Where do you start? How do you even start? Some of the funds look exactly the same, but you know there's some difference somewhere, but what on earth is it? You've worked incredibly hard for your money, so you don't want to invest in the wrong thing. Well, don't worry, I've got you covered. In this video, I'm going to filter all the 75 options down to several easy to understand branches, so you can start to hone in on the fund or groups of funds which best suit you. It is important to clarify though, I am not a financial advisor. And even if I was, I don't know your situation, so there's no way I could give you any sort of financial advice. I do, however, have a group of passionate people on my Patreon Discord server who love to talk about all things investing and Vanguard. So if you are interested in joining, there's a link in the description below. So, into the funds. Vanguard have four categories of funds. So you've got blended, equity, fixed income and money market. For simplicity, I'm going to move a single money market fund in with fixed income. So this gives us 75 funds which we can break down into three broad ranges. Think of these three categories as different levels of spice at Nando's. You'll get where I'm going in a minute. Your plane is the safe options all the way through to extra hot, which is the most adventurous but the most risky option. The first of these three categories is equities, and in my metaphor it will be extra hot. So equity ETFs is just a fancy word for buying a group of stocks and shares of companies. So think Amazon, Apple, Facebook, all bundled together in just one simple fund. But on the other end of the spectrum is our plane, which in the Vanguard world is fixed income. Fixed income is how Vanguard refers to bonds. You might have heard about bonds before, which are a little bit like mortgages, but it's actually the other way around. You're the one lending money, so maybe to a government or another sort of entity, who promises to give your money back, but with a little bit of a bonus on top. You're a smart cookie, so you've probably beaten me to it and figured out that blended funds means that it's a mix of both equities and fixed income. So going back to my metaphor, you've kind of got the middle section, which is lemon and herb, all the way up to the hot spice category. Why you might want to do this, I'll come on to later. But what does the spice level of each of these funds have to do with your investments? Well, actually, a hell of a lot, which is really going to dictate what direction you want to go in. There are two key factors you're interested in when it comes to your risk tolerance, or in my metaphor, spice level, which are the returns and volatility. Returns is how much investment will give you in terms of additional income, whether it's the payments in terms of dividends, a yield on a bond, or actually investment growing in value. The next is volatility, which is normally misunderstood. When people say something is high risk, they normally mean that it's just more volatile basically meaning that it can either gain or lose value extremely quickly. Think of the stock market crash last year in 2020 following the emergence of the pandemic when the market went down 30% just in four weeks. Theoretically speaking, this sort of movement shouldn't happen with bonds or what Vanguard refers to as fixed income. Traditionally, high returns come with high risk and for this reason, it's not suitable for everyone to chase high returns as their tolerance to volatility might not be that high. So, all these 75 funds sit on this scale, so let's go a little bit deeper. Let's start with plain and then build our way up. So let's start with the fixed income funds, where we actually have 24 funds plus the single money market fund. Here we have all the bond funds. One big thing to note is that bond funds are not risk free. You'll actually notice that Vanguard are taking the time to flag the risk level of each of the funds, ranging from about 2 to 4, which is actually at the low end of their scale, as it's 7 points on their scale in total. So even though the risk is lower, it isn't zero. These 25 bond funds are differentiated by two key factors, the region and who the money's been lent to. These factors determine the risk and return for the different options. The different regions Vanguard gives you options to are Europe, UK, United States, Japan and global. Global means these bond funds are made up of several different countries from around the world, meaning that your risk is spread across several regions. The way I like to think about this is that it's very unlikely for several countries to have a nuclear bomb dropped on them all at the same time. So it's basically not having all your eggs in one basket as such. This means you're more likely to get an average performance versus picking a single country. You also need to consider that some countries are deemed riskier than others. Lending money to the British government, for example, is deemed as safe. Well, definitely a lot safer than lending money to, say, a war-torn country in Africa, for example. 
If you delve into some of the funds within the Portfolio Data tab, each fund will show you the blend of credit quality rated on a scale of AAA to less than B or not rated at all. A AAA credit rating is deemed the highest quality possible, meaning that the people or entities who the money has been lent to are very, very unlikely to default on the agreement. But as there is little risk of defaulting on the loan, the return is lower. Equally, less than triple B or not rated means the likelihood of defaulting is higher, but as part of the higher risk, the return is meant to be higher, or at least it should be. To give you a quick comparison, the UK Government Bond Index Fund has a 99.5% AA credit rating or above, where the Emerging Markets Bond Fund only has 3.9% in AA or higher, over half of which is less than triple B or unrated. Within each of these geographies, there are fund options for different types of organisations you can lend your money to in the form of a bond. So you can lend it to governments, some are named as gilts, just so you know what that means, or banks, or even other sorts of corporations. It's important to know that all these funds run off a NAV, which stands for Net Asset Value. This will also be relevant for later on, but this means two things. You can only buy and sell at one time during the day. And secondly, it gives you the flexibility to invest as little or as much money as you want. Just because the NAV is, say, £100, doesn't mean you have to invest at least £100 to buy into it. It could be that you want to invest £10 or £250. All of it will be invested. Alternatively, any fund which has a market price would mean that you have to buy at least a full share to be able to buy into that fund, as Vanguard don't offer the option to buy partial shares. So what type of people would be interested in bonds? Well, typically, most people think of old people, but this isn't really fair. It's for individuals who have a shorter time horizon, meaning they need the cash out of this investment sooner rather than later. They don't want to put their money in a situation where it could drop 30% in four weeks. They would much rather play it safe and have a more limited upside, but then on the flip side, have a more limited downside. Think of people who want to retire soon, or maybe somebody who wants to buy their first house in several years. In terms of risk tolerance, this will become more apparent when we look at blended funds. Today, it's becoming more commonplace for individuals to purchase global bond funds, as people are more comfortable now with investing outside of their native region. But if you feel better about investing locally, or you have a certain outlook which means you favour one region over another, then knock yourself out. Outside of this, you might notice some funds say hedged accumulation. Well, this means two different things. The hedged refers to the fact that the fund has taken steps to prevent currency movements affecting the value of your holdings. Currency movements can either help or hinder the portfolio performance. Without going into detail, it's just another factor on top of many which can influence the performance of your fund. The next part is accumulation. If a fund is an accumulating fund, this means that any profits or gains that you make in this investment will automatically be reinvested. If your fund isn't accumulating, it means that any profits you can get so yields from a bond, for example, you will go into your cash holdings on your Vanguard account and won't be invested. So if you are looking to take your money out anytime soon, then an accumulating fund might be best for you as you don't need to consistently check your account to see if you've had any payments through. That's bonds. Let's kick up that spice meter. Welcome to blended funds. It's all in the name really, but you have 17 fund options here, but it's actually a lot more straightforward than you might think. Before I explain the difference between the life strategy funds, the target retirement funds and the global balance fund, let's quickly explore the methodology of having a blended fund in the first place. Why would somebody want a single fund which is split between bond and equities? Well one, it's simple. Who wants to juggle several funds when you can just own one which does it all? And the second is a good old risk versus reward situation. Maybe 100% equities is too risky, but then maybe 100% bonds is far too safe. It's truly the Goldilocks and the Three Bears scenario. It's just finding what's right for you. If you want to take more risk with blended funds, then you might want something like 80% equities and 20% bonds, just like you get with the Life Strategy 80 fund, which would be considered hot on the Nando Spice chart in our weird metaphor. You'll also notice that the Target Retirement Fund 2050 has the same mix, but this will change over time, which I'll explain shortly. On the other end, you might want to take less risk with blended funds without being 100% into bonds. So Life Strategy 20 would be great for you because it'd be 80% bonds and 20% equities. This sort of fund would be very much the lemon and herb on our Nando Spice chart. To demonstrate what this reduction in risk looks like based on what percentage of bonds you have in your portfolio, 
let's look at what the reality has looked like over the last few years. Here we have each fund with their annual average volatility. At the lower end, which is Life Strategy 20, you can see the volatility is very small at 5%. But as you go through and the fund grows in terms of proportion being allocated to equities, the volatility goes up with Life Strategy 100 having 16% in volatility, over triple that of Lifestyle 20. So the more exposure you have to bonds, the smaller the range in outcomes, less downside but less upside compared to equities. Okay, so now you understand the impact of different levels of blends, what next? Well, the first question is why are there three different types of blended funds? Well, the key two are the Life Strategy products and the Target Retirement funds. To keep it simple, the key difference between these two is all about control and how actively you want to manage your own investments. Let's start with the target retirement funds. Let's say you want to retire in the year 2055. Well, Vanguard will manage the blend of equities and bonds to manage your risk tolerance over time. Basically, they are making an assumption on how much risk you want to take based on how far off you are from retiring. This is perfect for people who either aren't interested in investing or actually don't feel confident enough to invest themselves. These funds give the responsibility all over to Vanguard. All you need to do is just pay into it and you're done. You can then not look at your Vanguard for say another 34 years and come back and pick up your money. The life strategy funds are basically the same but you have control over when you want to move from one allocation to another. Maybe you're now five years off retirement and you want to increase the amount of bonds in your portfolio. So you might want to move from, say, Life Strategy 60 to Life Strategy 40, and so on. There is one further fund to quickly mention called the Global Balance Fund, which is two-thirds equities and one-third bonds. In short, this is a perfectly balanced fund of the global markets, as the other blended funds tend to have a home bias to the UK, which some people don't want. So that's blended funds. It's likely that at some point in your life, you'll actually want a blended allocation but again, it's normally based on time horizons. If you want a more in-depth guide on the life strategy funds, then I'll put a link of one of my videos that I've done on the topic in the top right now. This brings us to the highest level of spice that we have, extra hot, which in our case is equities. This is where we have nearly half of all the funds here with actually 33 different options. So it's actually very easy to get overwhelmed. But let's take a bit of a breath and carefully break down these 33 funds into different buckets. Vanguard starts by splitting these funds into different regions. So we've got the UK, US, Europe, Asia Pacific, Japan, emerging markets and global. Let's save emerging markets and global until last. Without going through every single fund, let me tell you roughly what sort of different types of funds you'll find within these geographical areas. First, you'll have ones which track the largest number of companies within that region or country. So for example, you've got the S&P 500, which is the top 500 biggest companies in America. But then you've got the FTSE 100, which is the same but the UK. Another way to distinguish between funds is by their name. If it has the word index or fund in the title, then this means it's an accumulating fund, which is priced as a NAV, remember net asset value. This means you can't buy and sell it like a stock or share that you might have seen on TV with the share price bopping up and down. You can only buy and sell at one time per day. But the fund is accumulating, so any profits you make will get instantly reinvested. If the fund name lacks the word index fund or index fund, then it will have a market price which can be bought and sold whenever the market is open. But these funds will not be accumulating, so any profits you get in form of dividends will be put into your cash balance on your Vanguard account. Let's start by looking at the developed world and emerging markets. This is basically a split between developed countries, so think of the UK, the US, Europe, Canada, Australia, away from what Vanguard call the emerging markets. So think of China, Taiwan, Korea, India, Brazil, Mexico, all those sorts of things. It's as simple as that. If funds refer to itself as global or all world, then this means the funds carry both developed and emerging markets in the same fund. Next, if you see funds have the letters ESG in, this stands for Environmental, Social and Governance. I did a whole video talking about this, so I'll put a video in the top right again. But in a nutshell, these are ethical funds. So it means that companies which are deemed as bad have been stripped out. After that, some funds refer to CAPs. CAP is short for Capitalisation, which refers to the size of the companies within the fund. 
So for all cap would mean the fund includes all sorts of sizes, so large, medium, small. But where small cap will include only small cap companies. To give you a pointer, if you're new to Vanguard or investing in general, then the most popular equity funds are the ones which are fully globalised, which means you own a very small slice of everything from around the world. This normally points you to either the FTSE Global All Cap Index Fund, which means it's accumulating and it works off a net asset value, or the FTSE All World USIT ETF, which isn't accumulating and has a market price. This video is meant to be an introduction to the Vanguard funds, so you can start to distinguish between each of the funds, so you can pick which fund is right for you. If you have any questions, then let me know in the comments below, as I'll really try and get back to you. I can't give you financial advice, but I can help answer questions other than what you should invest into. Anyway, that's all for this video. See you in the next one.